Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition with Demonology Today with Grizzly and Dennis Carroll. Tonight, All right. the, the show is going to be about paranormal and dynamic connection. And ain't that right, Mr. Carroll? How are you doing tonight? All right. Have you had yes, an interesting sir. week? or Hello, Brenda. It's Hello, long, everybody. It's, it's been a long week. Hello, everybody out there. Uh, it's been a long week. Uh, it's been one of those weeks, but we had some kind of uh, bad weather come in a uh, uh, couple of days ago and uh, knocked my power off for a while there. So it was kind of hectic, but it, it finally, I had a show to do. I had a podcast to do that night, and uh, it was kind of close, but it came through, thank goodness. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, yeah, uh, Brenda's got some bad storms uh, heading her way. Actually, she's uh, actually got the tornadoes on the ground and worried about her daughter. So we're praying about you out there. So, ladies and gentlemen, you're in for an interesting show tonight. Dennis has prepared a quite uh, a timeline for us to go through. And any times uh, you have questions, uh, just put them out in the comments and I'll let Dennis know uh, what you're asking uh, and we'll answer them the best of our ability. So, sure. Uh, well, so you, you want to talk about the paranormal and then the dynamic? Yeah, there is a uh, distinct connection between the paranormal and the demonic. Now, by that, I mean the paranormal community. And the, and the investigation and research of the paranormal, there can be an element of the demonic hidden in some of this stuff. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, a lot of times people do things, Chris. They get, they do it the wrong way. They go about it the wrong way, unfortunately. That's just human. That's being human, I know. But we right. need to guard against that. We need to be careful about that because especially when you're dealing with the paranormal in certain aspects, and this includes the cryptids community, all of them, the whole paranormal thing. We've got to be careful how we do our work because we are open to subliminal attacks by the enemy in many ways. Uh, and if we don't do these things in the right way, they're looking and waiting for that opportunity. Uh, and they will take advantage of it. As I said before, the demonic, they're opportunists. They will never pass up a great opportunity. They're like, you know, the salesman that you can't get rid of at your door. Once they get their foot in the door, that's it, you know. Uh, right, right. And that's the way the demonic is. And so we've got to be very careful. And I've got to talk tonight about a little bit of what has happened with the paranormal world at large, with a lot of this new age philosophy thing that has come through. Uh, it, it can be very insidious because I'll say this about the new age thing. A lot of the new age is demonically based, I'm sorry to say. It has its basis in that. We know that the demonic spreads false doctrine. It spreads rumors. It spreads innuendo. It's very good at... Oh, yeah, there you got your holy water ready. Get yeah, it, right? somebody was like, holy grizzly. That's right, ladies oh, and yeah. gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I always got some right here on my table. Yeah, I anyway, got my crucifixes. I got my incense yeah. burning. We're ready if they attack tonight. We're ready for them. That's they better right. watch out. So anyway, what I was going to say is the demonic is very good at spreading this false stuff, doctrines and teachings. A lot of this is demonic. The Bible warns about that. You know, be very careful because there's a lot of demonic teaching going on out there. And there's a lot of it. There's more of it today than there has ever been before in this world. And we and we who are in the paranormal community have to be very careful how we approach this. Because, like I say, they're waiting to get the upper hand on us if we're not careful. We've got to understand something about, and I can't stress this enough, Chris, about the demonic. They are super intelligent, okay? We've got to understand that. These beings are super intelligent because who knows how old they are. They could be millions of years old. Uh, we don't really know. That's, a, that's an open question for theologians, by the way. Uh, who knows how old they are? But we do know they are incredibly old. And they, they are the watchers. They watch and they learn. They know a thousand languages. 
they know a lot of information hidden from you and I. Okay. They're privy to a lot of that that we don't know. So they're super intelligent. We've got to understand that. And our mere intelligence, I don't care how smart you think you are or how smart you may really be, you can't stand up to this type of intelligence on your own. You've got to be very careful how you deal with these things because they can sink you like a rock in the ocean, okay, that quick. So a lot of times people are going about in paranormal investigation in the wrong way. I have even heard, now this is going to blow your mind, okay, think about this a minute. I've even heard people that want to investigate, look for Bigfoot with uh, Ouija boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, come on, look for Bigfoot with a Ouija board, okay? <laughs> if he is demonic, you certainly would want to meet him on a Ouija board thing. Other type thing going on with that, definitely. But uh, I mean, people are people got to understand. I I could sit here tonight until this time tomorrow telling you about the cases I've had concerning Ouija boards. That's one of the worst worst things you can you can ever bring into your life, okay? Uh, it can bring you a whole lot of trouble. And I've had a lot of people oh, I've used them for years and nothing's ever happened. Well, you've been incredibly lucky. Somebody's looking out for you. Right, because you're, right, it's, right. It's, it's just like, like a five-year-old playing with a loaded gun. Something bad is going to happen sooner or later. And that's the way you got to look at it, you know? And, uh, and people are using the wrong tools for their research, Okay. If uh, just to make a quick point, if I'm going to go look for Bigfoot, it's not going to be with a Ouija board, okay? It's right. going to be on. It's going to be boots on the ground, going out and actually doing a real hunt, not a not a Ouija board thing. Uh, I mean, let's not let's not get ridiculous with this stuff, you know? Or, or trying to find or trying to find Bigfoot on a map with a crystal, okay? I mean, come on, you know that's just there's a right way and a wrong way to do everything, okay? And that's what I see happening in the paranormal world today, okay? Uh, I'm going to let you see what you think about it. But that a lot of that is going on, and not just the Ouija board. There's a lot of other different things, too, as well. Well, you know, the, the Ouija board, uh, I, people are watching these TV shows, and that's one of the things where I didn't tell anybody about my journey in the spiritual side last year, and, and, and I got, you know, became a reverend uh with a non-denominational church and the reason why is is i believe everybody has the right to believe in whatever they want to believe in i'm not going to force my religion on anybody right and you are right. the same way but you know when you're dabbling with stuff in the afterlife you know you are going to deal with good things but you know what we always say on each and every show is that not only that, if you believe in Yang, you believe in or Yang, you believe in Yang, you believe in Yang, you believe in good, you have to believe in evil. Uh, they do exist. Uh, people does uh, and have come home with attachments. Uh, hi, Dennis. Uh, hi, Midwest Night Watchers, uh, Agent Smith, everybody, hi, Norma. Uh, but the thing, though, is, is that, you know, they watch these things off TV. They, they go and provoke them. Uh, they don't they don't cleanse themselves before and set barriers or ground themselves. They don't they don't know what they don't know what to do. And then uh, then they come home and they have nightmares and they're fighting. Their relationship goes downhill. And they're starting to get sick. And ladies exactly. and gentlemen, this is this is true. This is real deal uh, truth. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, and and, 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 and you know, Chris, they get these attachments. And then they come to people like us and say, you got to help me, you know. And really, uh, when it comes to the demonic, a whole pound of prevention is a whole lot better than a pound of cure, okay. Uh, right, it's better to right. prevent the problem from happening uh, before, especially before it gets too bad. And you need to prevent this from ever happening if you're professional investigator. You need to act like a professional, okay, and take the precautions. That professionals do you go you, you 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 say you know you protect yourself going in and you protect yourself coming out and they're not only the protection for you and you it's for your family and your friends too okay because they could be affected by this stuff. you know 
You're right. And, you know, nobody believes in anything until it, until it happens to them, you know? Yeah. Uh, and we can talk about cases where family members have gotten very sick because they said, Oh, well, the ghost can't hurt me. And, and, and we had that one case we talked about last week where the 14 year old, you know, unexpectedly died perfectly healthy uh, in the attic where her room was, where she was being tormented and uh -huh. had poltergeist activity. And the dad, you know, confronted it. And it's like, I'm not scared, you know, and they're not going to hurt me or my ch And uh, so, and he did say what he said. And, and shortly after, and we're not saying, ladies and gentlemen, that the evil entity did cause it. Um, we don't know. Uh, the autopsy says she had a heart attack, but the, the, the father's like, you know, real hateful. I'm not afraid of that ghost or any ghost. They're not going to hurt me or my family. Uh, they can't do nothing. And he kind of like challenged it. And I tell people never challenge things. Okay. Uh, it, it, cause you don't you know, know what you're dealing with. And you know, I've heard people, Chris, that say, Oh, I'm a demon fighter. You know, I'll kick their butt. I'll go in. I'll, I'll throw these demons out. I, that is, that to me is a sure sign that they're not really, uh, know what they're doing with spiritual, real true spiritual warfare. Uh, they're, they're actually challenging these things. And when you challenge these things, they'll take you up on it. And, and like I said before about the demonic, okay, as compared to like a, uh, a, a, a human spirit, might could move a piece of paper. The demonic can move the table that that piece of paper is on. They're very strong, and they're, they're very corrupted individuals. And when they do something, they go way overboard the way they do it. So you're really messing around with something very, very dangerous that can very badly affect you not only spiritually, but physically, mentally. And emotionally, okay, yeah, we've got, and intellectually as well. You've got to be very careful uh, I just, when you I deal just turn with my rim, I rim, rim pod on. Yeah, okay. no, yeah. yeah I just, just turn my rim pod on, so. Yeah, go right ahead, make, make sure you don't have any unwanted visitors. Yeah, so. Uh, but um, I, but that, that, that is what we've got to stress to people. I mean, I can't stress it enough, you know. And look, I don't care how much you have good thoughts. And that the dragons and the unicorns are going to come help you. It just ain't going to go, okay? It's just not going to go down that way. You're going to have some bad problems. What we got here? Now, uh, my EMF detector. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and like I tell people, you know, you believe what you want to believe. And what's really bothers me the most, uh, Mr. Carroll, is that People take the biblical word and fit it to fit their lives these days. Uh -huh. And uh, okay, it was just my elbow. I was like, we're getting activity in my studio. Uh, Let me, okay. uh, push it back a little further here. But uh, put, good put evening, your EMF Joey. A little, bit, uh, a little bit closer to the thing, we can see it. There you go. There. Well, I don't want to get too close because I am around yeah, electronics. That's, that's good right there. Yeah, I just like to see it. Yeah, it starts ramping up on you a little bit there. Uh, yeah, there it goes a little bit. Uh, Let me see if I can get it right there. I need to, I need to probably duct tape it. Yeah. So, it but I actually had uh, a lot of, uh, and it could be because my mic. So that's well, why I was saying, holding it behind be the mic. The magnetic yeah, was, uh, properties on that, yeah. Yeah, so, that's why I was holding behind my mic. Uh, so that's why you just see a green I had, mic. I, I, I had somebody come tell me one time, say, hey, this little road I went down, it's haunted, you know. I said, well, how do you know that? So oh, my EMF went off. I said, well, let's go back and look at it. It turned out it was haunted by a power line going up under the road there. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, but anyway, getting back to what I was saying, we've got to be very careful how we do these things. And we got to really? understand. The enemy is waiting for his opportunity. Let's not give it the opportunity. Uh, and, you know, there's a certain personality, I'm not going to mention his name, who has a very famous TV show who actually supposedly goes on there every once in a while and asks spirits to possess him. Okay, uh-uh. No, 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 that's a bad idea. Even if it's fake, it's still a bad idea because you are opening the door to your inner being. 
that's a very dangerous situation. Um, you don't want to do that under any circumstances. And that's like I've had a lot of people come to me and experiment with out-of-body astral projection. And I said, no, 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 you got to be very careful with that because you're, you know, you're le if you're leaving your body, you might find a visitor there when you get back some night. You might not want, you know. Um, right, right. You, you got you got to be very careful how you handle the paranormal. That's just what I'm saying. And don't open yourself up to these things because that's what they're waiting for. But that connection is it. Not just with uh, not just with uh, uh, Ouija boards and crystals and all this stuff, which is a lot of New Age stuff, like I said. The New Age is based a lot on esoteric conjecture. Okay, that's absolutely true. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so you've got to be very careful about that. And some of it is rooted in even the very aspects of Aleister Crowley. Who was deep into it. He is really, if you want to say, the progenitor of actual the new of uh, the modern new age kind of a thing. He kind of got it started, in other words. Um, so you've got to be very careful what you're dealing with. And like I say, if you get in trouble, the unicorns and the dragons are not going to come help you out. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be looking for some professionals, maybe. Don't get to that point though. That's what we don't want. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, ask me, uh, okay, I just had activity on my REM pod. But uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, well, you know, can you help me? And I'm like, well, I can, but, you know, A, you have to have faith, and two, you have to be pure. And we talk about this on every show. And everybody expects that, this is going to go away on the first try. That's not how it works, ladies and gentlemen. It, it can make it worse. Uh, it can get a whole lot worse. And, or it can get quiet, then ramp back up. So you never know what it, what it's capable of doing. Am I right? Exactly. And you know that, that question we had earlier about the house blessings, the house cleansings, or some people, as I said before, call them ec uh, location exorcisms. Uh, I'm not too familiar. I'm not that big on the that nexus thing, but I have done thousands of these uh, cleansings, and it depends on what the situation is, how you approach it, just like anything else in the paranormal. It's a very bad infestation. You approach it differently than you do just some mild stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a different way to approach it. So that's what you have to when you when you go to do something to help people out with this. That's what you got to determine. And only experience will help you do that. You know, of course, knowledge and experience, and of course, goes hand in hand. But um, uh, you've got to know what you're dealing with and how bad the situation is and what it is and what caused the situation, you can find out. Because I'm going to tell you this, Chris, every case in the paranormal, I don't care what it is, whatever the case is, whatever field of the paranormal you're dealing with, there's a key that you must find that opens that case for you, Okay. It will open the knowledge you need to know about what the situation is. Maybe sometimes there may be more than one key, you know? Yeah. But that's what yeah. you've got to look for. You've got to look for that, and you've got to interview people. And, you know, here's the whole thing about it, and I've had this happen many, many times. I've interviewed people who were not honest with me, okay, for, for whatever their different reasons were. And you need to be honest with us because we, we're trying to help you, you know? And if you're not honest with you, that keeps us from helping you. That thwarts us. Uh, that defeats us in the beginning if you're not totally honest with me. And I have ended, had to interview a lot of people that way, Chris, that you dry, eventually slowly drag out the truth out of them. You have to sometimes to find out what's really going on. And here's another thing. The demonic influence don't, doesn't want you to have that key. They don't want right. you to have right. that knowledge to fight them with, see? That's the other thing you're fighting against, too. So, Agent Smith wants to ask you, have you ever heard of the black-eyed children? Oh, yeah. Has he or them ever encountered them? I have. Uh, I had a case with this lady uh, not too far from where I live. She called me up one day. And she said, uh, Mr. Carroll, I saw you on television. And my friend saw you on television and told me to call you. 
She said, I had a very unsettling experience. She said, I'm a country girl. I'm kind of a tomboy. She said, I'm not scared. Of, I'll take on any man, you know, if he messes with me. She said, I'm, I'm, I'm that way. She said, but this experience just throws me for a loop. She said, I have felt things I've never felt in my life. Here's what happened. She was walking up town, and I went back to the very spot where this happened. She was walking up town, and uh, she got a strange feeling. It was in a crowd of people. It was on a hot summer day. Okay. I got a weirdest feeling, like, you know, that you get the hair on the back of your neck. Somebody's staring right, at you. Right. You know? And she said, I turned around and looked, and there's this kid behind me. And she said, oh, he might have been maybe 14, 13, 14, 15 years old, somewhere in there. And he had a, he had old clothes on. He had a hoodie on. Now think about this on a hot summer day. The guy's got a hoodie on. Okay. And I said, but that wasn't what you know bothered me. She said the feeling I began to get from this guy, from this boy. And I looked, and when I looked back again, I could see that his eyes were completely black. And I said that's what really got me. She said that it shook me. I said I began to feel a fear I have never felt before in my life. She said, I ducked into a, a store that was there, and I watched. You see, she said, I never saw him go by. She said, I went and looked outside. I couldn't see him. She said, I ran to my car. She said, I went home, and for the rest of the weekend, I did not leave my house. That was how scared I was by this. And she said, it shook me. Well, of course, I counseled her about it, and she got better. She was already getting better. She was getting over it, but she was still nagging at it, you know, the fear. And I have heard this so many times that the people that run into the black eyed kids pick up on this, this, this overwhelming fear, this dread that comes on them from these encounters. And that, my friend, is the number one big demonic sign is that fear because they want to generate that fear so that you will have more fear. They feed off of that. And that's what makes these beings so dramatically stronger and dangerous from that very fact they create the negativity that they want to feed off of. They're like vampires. Okay. Yeah. And, so uh, I think that the black eyed kids are downright to me. A lot of people think they're aliens and that's another possibility. Well, you know, you got you can't discount, but to me, they have that, that demonic smell to them. Definitely. Yeah. So what's really strange is, is my mom told me, I think about a year, year and a half ago, uh, and it seems like you hear more about this out in the suburbs or, or more in the country. Uh, that uh, her friend, which is probably in her late seventies, was still working. Um, you know, unfortunately, she had to. Uh, and around nine thirty, ten o'clock at night, she said she heard a knock on the front door. Well, she don't have neighbors because she lives out in the country, so she thought somebody broke down and needed to use a phone. But you know. These days, people have cell phones, right? Unless somebody's hurt. So she opens the front door and off to the porch, there were two kids around the same age. You said uh, one looked like a girl with long hair. Another one looked like a boy. Uh, the skin was very, very pale white, like powder white. Uh, and they had hoods on. And they wanted to come inside. And oh, yeah. she said the, the, the feeling that the, she had was just like you described. And she didn't know what to do. So she slammed the door and they kept knocking on the door over and over. Why did they want to come in? What were they, were they asking permission? Here's the thing about it, Chris. Okay. Let me, let me explain this real quick. Uh, you know, the, the legend of the vampire. I had I should have run in with a vampire. I have to tell you that some, about it one day. But it, the, the legend of the vampire in is they can't come in your house unless you what? Invite them. Invite them. Okay. Well, what is a vampire? A, a vampire is demonic. It's a demon inhabiting a dead body. That's what it is, okay? If you want to get down to brass tacks, that's what a real vampire is. 
Now, I'm not talking about those societies that sit around drinking blood with their wine and all that stuff. I'm talking about the real deal. Anyway, here's what I'm going to tell you this. When I go to a place to do a location blessing or whatever whatever name you want to call it, cleansing, I will knock on the door, and whoever lives there, that comes to the door, and I say, well, they'll say, oh, hey, you know, I'm glad you're here and all that. We have a nice little nicety as we talk, and then I say, well, are you going to invite me in? And the reason I ask you that, if you invite me in, then you give me authority there. You give me authority when you invite me in, and even the demonic recognizes that authority, okay? The demonic, did you know the demonic recognizes the marriage? They yes. recognize relationships. They recognize authority. Oh, yeah. And when you have that authority, then you've got one leg up in the saddle, as John Wayne used to say. One leg up in the saddle on them, okay? Uh, because you've got that over them. But what you're coming in, I'm not coming in the authority of Dennis Carroll, okay? I'm coming in the authority of God. That's a whole lot bigger authority than me. Uh, that's what it's all about. You represent God, therefore you have to exercise his authority over these things, okay? And that's what these black-eyed kids are wanting. They want you to invite them in. So they will have power over you or and over where you live. You know, that's what it's all about. It's the power grab. So spiritual and cryptid encounters ask, do the demons make their presence known to you because of the good works you do? Not necessarily. They don't they don't they don't like good stuff. They don't like good stuff. They'd rather it be evil stuff. Uh they don't they don't even like to deal with good stuff in any in any form or matter. Here's one thing you got to remember. God does not do evil, nor does he create evil. And Satan is the same way. He does not good do, uh, do good, or does he create good things. It may look that way. Don't let it fool you, okay? That's where people run into a problem. Uh, there's a lot of things in this world that uh, are not what they really appear to be. Yeah, and, and that is a true fact, you know, and it seems like the more and more people, and, and that's why I took the, the spiritual leap last year and did my studies and to understand more of the paranormal side of things, the other side of, you know, good versus evil, uh, heaven versus hell, the nomics and the demons and you know, the, the spiritual battle side of it, you know, the warfare that, that continues to get or is going on daily, you know, in everybody's lives and in the world. And because, you know, all these new ghost hunters or investigators, like I said, we watch this stuff off TVs and they're like, well, I can do that. You know, yeah. they go out to Amazon, get them a $15, you know, uh, re tape recorder, digital recorder, and I don't know what to do with my EMF thing. It was just sitting right here, but they'll give them an EMF detector. You know, you can get two of these off Amazon for what, 28 bucks? Yeah. Well. You know, and there they go. And, you know, they well, and provoke, yeah. talk that's nasty to it. That's the, that's the problem, Chris. And here's another thing, like that person I mentioned earlier, it's giving out wrong information. Oh, yeah, I call a, a spirit into me and let it possess me. And all. That's the wrong way to do it. And they're telling people the wrong things. And people are seeing this. Oh, I can do that. Uh, we have a responsibility to tell people the real deal and not, not a bunch of junk like that. Because that's only going to get them in, in bad hot water kind of thing, you know. Uh, that's a big responsibility we have. We don't want to mislead people the wrong way. We've got to tell it the right way. To, to, to deal with these. Yeah, so when we talk about the paranormal and dynamic, I mean, what's the best way to explain that to people in layman's terms? Because, you know, when I talk to them, they're like, do what? What What are you talking about? And I, and I feel like, you know, I'm breaking it down as best as I can. But, I mean, what's your approach to it? I mean, how do you explain it to people? 
But usually I tell them that there's a whole lot to this world, to this universe, that we can't see, hear, or experience. We are limited in our scope. Uh, there's a whole lot out there. Okay, hey, for instance, the wind. You cannot see the wind, but you can see its effects. You can see what it does and how powerful it can be. It can destroy people and, and, and buildings and stuff. But you can't see it. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just because you don't see it. And look at the germs, the, the, the millions of germs around us, the microbes. They can kill us, but we can't see them. So a whole lot of this universe, this world, our existence is unseen. That was why I named my first, uh, one of my books, The Road Unseen. There's so much unseen things around us. Uh, I remember what happened with Elijah and Elias in the Bible. Uh, there was a big battle with the Philistines that day. And Elias was telling Elijah, well, we're, we're doomed. You know, they're like 100 to 1 on us. They're going to wipe us out. You know, God's not even going to help us. And Elijah said to God, said, God, open his eyes and let him see. And all of a sudden, Elijah said, where did all these men come from? All these big men, strong men standing with us. Where did they come from? All of a sudden, at last, saw the spiritual aspects of this universe. And that's what I talk about with the paranormal. The paranormal is the spiritual side of our existence. Science does not recognize the spiritual because you can't put it in a test tube. You can't experiment with it because it's, it's not viable enough to hold but they don't recognize it. They have their blinders on, like we've talked about before. They don't want to see there's only a certain viewpoint, and that's it, which is not what true science is, by the way. That's not real science, okay? But anyway, they don't believe in that, you know? And that's like, for, and I, I tell people this example. For many, many years, science said, oh, there is no such a thing as ball lightning. But I've seen it. You may have seen it. I don't know, but I've seen it. I've and seen it, does it before. Exist. It does exist, but for many years they said, oh, no, that's impossible. And finally they proved it. So, and they said, finally now they said, oh, yeah, there is such a thing as ball lightning. Okay. But see, that's, the, that's their attitude. And we must not close our minds. Here's what I tell people when it comes to the paranormal. Just look at the word paranormal a minute. Paranormal simply means above the normal. That's all it means. You know, a lot of people mix that up with supernatural. That's a different term, really. Supernatural, yes, they do. Look at, supernatural is God, okay? It's something way far above the natural, the supernatural. Um, that goes above, much, much above, more above paranormal, okay? But I explain the paranormal that way. It's something out of the ordinary, something that may, of course, not be explained. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to explain it. We're trying to investigate. We're trying to understand it. And you must remember that paranormal part of our lives. And you don't ever think about it until it affects you sometimes. But I have had so many people come to me, Chris, and say, why you, Dennis? Why you? Why do you have so many experiences? Why have you seen things? Well, I've been around long enough. I've been around. I put myself in those situations, of course. But some people go their entire lives, Chris, and never have what they actually think is a paranormal experience. Right. Some people do. It seems like the paranormal picks some people out because the more attention you pay to it, the more it will pay attention to you. That's just yes. the way it works. But I try to explain that way to them. This is the unseen side of us, the spiritual side. And we have a spirit. All things like us. Living things, I think, have a certain kind of a spirit. Some may be a higher spirit than others. Like we may be higher than animals, you know, in that respect. But they have spirits too, I believe. Okay, all living things have a spirit. That is the essence of God. Because what did Jesus say about God in the Bible? He is a what? A spirit. It must be what? Worship. Yes. Spiritually. So we can't ignore that spiritual side of our existence. That's a foolish thing. Yeah, Supernatural Effects podcast with Jim Blanton. I wish I never had my experience at 16. What kind of experience did you have, Jim? 
you know, and, yeah, and that's yeah. the yeah. thing. Yeah, I want to I want to know more about that. And, and that's the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is that, you know. People always want to talk about the good things, which I understand. And I know psychics, medium, rankers, reikis, however you want to call them, they never want to talk about the negative because it's they just don't want no part of it. Okay, that's fine. But what do you do when it comes? You know, they 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 tell me they tell them to go away. Don't want them a part of it. Uh, they can be in rooms with people that have bad energy and they get just feel bad around them. They feel their emotions. So it, it's real, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, uh, I don't know how else to describe you. And the people that has been through it, you know, has caused them a lifetime with nightmares and reoccurrences of, I don't want to say PTSD, but symptoms of it, if they not, you know, got diagnosed with it. I mean, when you see stuff fly off the shelf and you see my backdrop get picked up, and tossed right during a live yeah. show and I jump up and my spiritual books and my dynamic books are coming up and I had to kill my feed. That was not staged, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you saw me sitting just like I am hands are on the desk in front of me crossed on my studio desk. And when I saw that happen, you know, and I was told later it's just a friendly ghost trying to have some fun. Well, to me, it wasn't no fun. It scared the jeeva bejeebies out of me. But, you know, that's why I got my REM pod out and my EMF detector out. And, you know, but I don't know. You know, it's everybody's encounters are different. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these these shows you see on TV, I mean, they film for hours to get, you know, a 47 minute show or 44 or 43 minute show counting the commercials. And you got to you know, remember too, it's there. They're under intense pressure to make money. Yes. That's what it's all about. The money. Yeah. Be very, very suspicious of anything having to do with money. Uh, that's what the name of the game is. Okay. Uh, uh, money buys power and power has money. But, um, Anyway, uh, a lot of this is fakery, okay? I got to say that. A lot of this stuff is fake and put on. I, um, I, I know how Hollywood operates, okay? Matter of fact, I've done a little acting in my time. I, I was in a horror movie one time. I was in, uh, in that. So I know, I know how the background of Hollywood. I know how it works. 99.9% .9 of everything you see on television and movies is not real. I'm sorry to tell you that, but that's the way it goes. Uh, so don't let that fool you, okay? Don't let those be your examples. You need to go to real investigators and people that know the real paranormal things. And like I say, this new age philosophy that's going around is leading people in the wrong directions on a lot of this stuff, okay? But I want to make a statement right here. I'm not getting down on psychics. I don't call them psychics. I call these people gifted people, okay? And I want you to know I'm not getting down on them because these people have been given gifts by God, okay? Uh, but you must be careful if you have a gift. You're very sensitive. you gotta, you got to remember this. Sensitive people are targets for the demonic, okay? They're like they're walking around with a target on their back because they're sensitive, okay? Especially women. You know, I've seen the demonic really attack women more than men in some ways um, because they're very sensitive to these things. So you got to remember, if you're sensitive, you better deal with it. You've got to learn to live with it, but you've got to be extra careful. And if you have a gift, the demonic would love to turn that gift to their advantage and against you. So be very, very, very careful, okay, out there. And, and, and walk through this dark land carefully and carry a big stick, okay, just to, just to be sure. Yeah. So speaking with people with abilities, you know, I work with them uh, on missing person cases, murder cases, open cases, code murder cases, you know, nationally known, locally known. Uh, one of the questions I always have is where do they get their information from? That's the problem. See, uh, I talked to, you know, I don't know if I told you this before, but I talked to a psychic one time. And I said, uh, she told me some information. I said, well, this is very interesting. 
uh, you know, I'll check it out. But let me ask you a question. Where did you get this? In- How did you get this information? She said, well, my spirit guy told me, you know, and I said, oh, well, that's very interesting. Tell me about your spirit guy. She said, well, this is my spirit guy comes to me and we're, it's my connection to the spirit world, you know, to the spiritual side of things. And I said, well, that's interesting. Who is it? Is it, a, is it you know, a man or a woman? Well, who is it? She said, well, uh, he's my spiritual guy. You know, I don't know his name. He's my spirit guy. And, and I said, well, who told you that that's your spirit? I said, well, the spirit guy told me. And I said, well, don't you not realize that you could be lied to here? <laughs> Somebody could be telling you the wrong, the, the, the wrong thing here. You know, I said, you need to be very careful. Here's what I tell people like that, Chris. Be very, very careful who you're connected with, what you're connected with, and where that information comes from. Well, let me ask you this, and I know of a situation where a guy has a close friend, and uh, he's going through some problems, uh, from what I've been told, and uh, other people that have abilities are, you know, informing this person to get rid of the negative energy. I mean, how do you do, I mean, what do you do about that? Negative energy is defeated by positive thoughts and positive attitude on things. Uh, the Bible says, whatever is wholesome, good, holy, righteous, think upon these things. You know, that's giving you a key here, okay? Look at it close. It's telling you that your attitude connects directly with your spirit, okay? Uh, you ever you ever seen that cartoon with the guy that's so depressed and down? He's walking along, and there's a rain cloud dropping rain on him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> Look what Job said in the Bible when Satan took everything he had away from him. Job said something very interesting. This is anti-faith, by the way. Okay, he said, "What I greatly feared has come upon me." Listen to that statement real close. What I greatly feared has come upon me. He didn't have faith. He, he finally found faith because of what all happened to him. Thank goodness he did find his faith. But he didn't have it at that point. And that shows you that that is where the basis of the seed of faith begins to grow. You know, in here. In your attitude. Whether it's positive or negative. Good or bad. You know, happy or sad. Is what you're going to be, and that's that's how it directs connectly, correct, connectedly to your spirit, definitely. So, should the person cut ties with the the body of his? Well, if, if somebody, what... if you're dealing with somebody or a situation that's getting you down and negative, you need to think about it. You need to think about: is there some way out of this, or? Is there something I need to do to change this? Because listen to this. This is another interesting spiritual concept. What you put forth, whether it be positive or negative vibes or whatever name you want to give them, whatever you put forth, you will get back, as the Word of God says, sevenfold. So whatever you put forth, you're going to get back. If it's good stuff, most of the time, you're going to get good stuff back. But if it's negative, what do you expect you're going to get back? Well, that's true. Yeah, that's and that's true. how we combat this. You know, I've told people that about the demonic. When the demonic attacks, Jesus said the very same thing. When the devil attacks you, when he beats you down to the ground and is ready to stomp you, he said, get up, wash your face, and be happy because you are exactly where God wants you to be. Okay. In other words, you're exactly where you need to be spiritually. And he said, don't let, don't give into it. That's how you spirit, that's how true spiritual warfare begins. You don't get into it, you push back on it, but you do it the right way. You know, here's what a guy told me one time years ago, and it's always stuck with me. If I could grab a devil by the neck and just beat him real good and be happy. I said, but you can't do that, but you can still fight him. You can still fight him, but you got to do it the right way. Now, Brenda's asking you a question. Uh, if you try to put the positive in them, 
but if it don't work, what do you do? Well, it's the positive things are work in progress, Brenda. You got to keep going with it, okay? And you make inroads little by little. It's like tiny baby steps getting where you want, but you're traveling on a journey to that. You know what I'm saying? And the more positive you keep trying to put out, you will reap rewards for that, okay? It may not seem, it may seem your journey is uphill. And, you know, a lot of our journeys are uphill, unfortunately, on a bad road. But we've got to keep going and keep that positive attitude going. We're in, we're sort of, like I said earlier, about that leg up in the saddle on it, you know? We're ready to ride. Well, what do you do when you say enough's enough, though? I mean, what do you tell people? What do you mean when uh, when they're they're down and depressed and all that? No, that uh, you try to you try, but they're just dragging you down. They're always oh. negative, and you try to pump them up and well, you, you try this so for you, months, yeah. and now Some now people, you're getting their negative energy. And I mean, what do you do? Do you just here's awesome? the sad thing. Here's the sad thing about it, Chris. Some people don't want help. They want to be that way. I know it's a sad, twisted thing. But they actually want that. They're more comfortable that way. It's just like the, uh, and I've seen this happen in law enforcement. Uh, you can beat this woman up, and she still wants to stay with that man. Yeah, why? that's true. Yeah, you know why? Why? And that's kind of a sick thing about that. Okay, there's a, it's a mental sickness. It's got to be that you want to stay, and you don't want to get out of that level. So if you have that problem, you need to evaluate yourself. Spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally, you need to start evaluating yourself. Why am I doing this? You know, because it's self-destructive. And let me tell you what, what's the number one arrow in the quiver of the demonic? Self-destruction. Destruction. Dem yep. Demons don't kill you. They don't usually, although there are rare cases of demonic murder, but they don't usually come right out now and kill you. They get somebody else or they get you to do it. But that's the way they work. Self-destruction. Well, you know, I get that question asked a lot, and I don't want to give them false information. And and I think the way that you put it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, Brenda says, that's right, Jim. Uh, I don't think the person that will not take God's words. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. So if that person don't even yeah. believe in God's word and you're that trying your best, then, yeah. then that's... Then that is a serious problem. Then, yeah, uh, I, I do not, don't, lol. So no, you okay? So what you're saying, you do believe in God and stuff and the higher power, whatever it may be, but the other person does not. Is that what you're uh, saying, Brenda? Is in your situation or one of your, you know, people that you know of? Uh, yes, no. Uh, but you know, I you get that to, question uh, a lot. It, you have to try to reach people. That's your that's your job. But you can't keep beating your head up against the wall there, okay? Because it will begin to detrimentally affect you. Um, and I've often told people this, okay? Um, God wants you to be peaceable, but he doesn't want you to be a doormat either, okay? He wants yeah, you to be peaceable to people. Yeah. You know? He doesn't, he doesn't want that for you. And, you know, it's like the Bible says, do not cast your what? Pearls before swine. Don't right. waste your time. It comes to a point where you've done your best. You have to leave it up to God. You know, let go and let God. And that's all you can do, you know? Brenda says, I see that, and I'm at that point. So, and I think a lot of people that I've talked to uh, that comes to me for guidance and, and spiritual help, you know, it, that is a rough decision. And I don't make that for you. Uh, I give you what, Dennis Carroll says uh, we speak along the same lines and that's why we fit so well together, you know, doing the show together because we think alike and uh -huh. uh, I'm trying to follow in his footsteps. He's, he's got many years on top of, of me with dealing with all this. And I really look up to him. Uh, very knowledgeable. He's been doing this for what? 35 plus years. 55 plus years. Oh, yeah. 55. Sorry. Yeah, I missed yeah, 20 I'm years. Older. I hope I'm older than I look. Uh, old, look uh, younger than no, I look. You, you, don't, you don't look old. You don't. I mean, you look like you're in your 40s. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm a little <laughs> bit older than that. <laughs> no, you really do. Uh, Brenda says thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome, yeah. Brenda. But, you know, and somebody asked a question, something like that, I think, earlier, and, and I wanted to touch bases because I hear that a lot. Mm-hmm. And I always tell people, no, don't base your decision off me. Turn it over to God and let exactly. to the higher power. And that and is the, uh, the number one thing of spiritual warfare prayer. Uh, and I'm a big believer in that because I've seen it work. I've seen results. Okay. I mean, you believe in something that has results. And definitely I've seen the results. Uh, there is a very big power in prayer. Okay. Definitely. And uh, don't give up on anybody completely. Pray for them. You know, uh, if you can't get through to them by talking to them, then you can do two things that really help out. And that's pray. Pray as much as you can for them. And the other thing is give them a good example. People learn by looking at us, you know, a lot. And they say, that oh, is true. Look, yes. Look at look at Chris. I want to be like him, you know, you know, and, and that's the way people look at it. And then you lead by example, you know. And as you go up, here's the thing about it, Chris. If you come to me and you say, Dennis, uh, you need to straighten your life up, and you go out and I see you uh, uh, go to a big party and get doped up and drunk out of your mind and all that, I'm going to say, well, God, where was Chris coming from? <laughs> you know, telling right. me to clean my life up, you know. Uh, so we've got to remember, people are looking at us. They're watching us. And we need to, to, to give them that responsibility of that outlook that we need to put forth on that. Yeah, Supernatural says, uh, great show, Grizz and Dennis. Thank you. Thank uh, you. It's amazing what prayer can do. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. absolutely, yeah. you know, and everybody says, well, who am I praying to? Well, you know, I'm praying to my God. You can pray to your higher power, but prayer does work, okay? I've seen it work over the years. I've seen miracles happen. But once again, you know, when we talk about the paranormal, you know, you're going to have side effects with investigations. And that's very important to learn about. That's why Dennis and I teamed up. It's like, you know what? Nobody wants to talk about this, you know, because a lot of people is, oh, man, you know, I don't want nothing to do with your show because you're talking about demons. No, it's not about all about demons. It's talking about what you encounter, what you're going to expect, what you're going to deal with, what you're you're going to run into. It's also the positive side of things. You know, we're not going to give credit where credit is due, okay? That's not what we're here for. We're here for educational purposes and to ask, answer questions and and try to help people with issues like we, as as we've done on prior shows. And, you know, I I won't say this to some people out there that's that's watching tonight. Um, if you deal with the paranormal, if you're an investigator, whether it be cryptid or whatever, you're dealing with dark subjects, okay? That's a dark matter uh, a lot of times. It, it, it can be very negative. It can be demonic. It can be dark. And you got to remember this. You need to get away from it once in a while. You know, you need to get away and back off of it once in a while. Because if you handle the darkness too much, it stains you. It puts a stain on you, and we don't want that. You don't want to do that. So it's good to get away from it. Think about other things. Get to know that positive attitude going. Don't stay in that darkness too long, okay? That's just my warning. That you don't do that because it can negatively affect you in many, many ways. Yeah, it can. Now, uh, there's been a lot of requests for me to send out items to help cleanse homes. Uh, I do have a kit put together. It's $54.95. It's not to make money off of it. Shipping for priority mail is $10.20. And you're covering the contents inside the box, the materials that I send. Uh, It's religious artifacts uh, and some other stuff, holy water, crucifixes, and whatnot. And then we do these uh, blessings together and we pray together and we show, I show you how these things work. Now, with that being said, uh, 
I'm not saying this is going to guarantee work for everybody. Uh, you got to be pure at heart and you got to have faith. I keep telling everybody that. And uh, supernatural effects, uh, Jim Lance says, yes, it will, Dennis. And uh, take breaks. Don't let it become an obsession. And that's that, an, that's another thing that people do. Yeah. They they get obsessed with stuff. Oh, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, you know, I've had people tell me, I've had people accuse me of that, uh, uh, Chris. I saw Dennis, all you do, eat, breathe, and sleep, and call demons. No, no, no. I don't think about demons all the time. I don't, I don't particularly care for demons. Uh, I look upon them as sort of the cockroaches of the unseen world. Uh, uh, I would rather talk about angels, by the way. Angelology is one of my favorite subjects. But that's a much more positive thing. But the demonic, no. And, you know, you don't need to deal, if you, you don't want to definitely become obsessed with these things. Because that opens the door to these things if you're not careful. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think my belief is, is I think when people get obsessed with these things, I think it's the negative energy doing that to you because they want to feed off you. And, you know, when something doesn't feel right, that's your human natural instincts telling you to get out, you know, to, to maybe say a little blessing or a prayer, whatever faith or religion you're in is because that's our human functions. That's our, that's our human defense. Okay. And you need to acknowledge that. And a lot of people don't do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, um, a lot of people saying uh, are out there thinking, oh, well, I've got the answer and you're wrong or and all that. But you can't look at it that way because people deal with these things in different ways. OK, but it reminds me of that passage in the Bible where they came to Jesus and they said, uh, Jesus, there's a group of people over here and they're casting out demons in your name and they're, and they're not with us. You know, Jesus said, leave them alone. If they're not against their force, okay? And we're all working towards a common goal, and if that's what it's going to be, if it's what we're truly working for. Let's not impede each other in that, you know? If we're working towards that common goal for the good. Yeah, no, I mean, you're absolutely right on that. And uh, it, it's amazing. Jim says, I will fast and pray before an investigation. You have to clear the mind and body and spirit. And he's actually exactly. right. Exactly. Uh, now, the real investigators that I've seen in person, they actually do that beforehand. Oh, yeah. uh, they do their they do their prayer. They do their holy water. They do their incense, whatever they use. The, what I would the, always do, uh, what I always do, Chris, I would pray myself individually first before I ever went, you know, before I ever went on the investigation. And then I would have a prayer with the group uh, before they go in. And then afterwards when they come out, you know. Uh, but it's good to have your own meditation first by yourself alone before you go. You know what I'm saying? It sets no. yourself right first. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. You know, a lot of people say, well, we don't we don't believe in that and so forth. Well, you know. You do what you what what you want to do, and then you come to us for help and have questions, and and we and that's the first questions we ask you: What have you done? What did you do? Okay, what did, now before, what you didn't do. <laughs> that is correct. Sometimes that is correct. Yeah, yeah. Even Jim says, "Pray for your fellow investigators." You know, and oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, and people used to look at me with my other fellow officers and we used to go eat out in public. We would pray, you know, before we eat and people would roll their eyes and stuff like that. You know what? We didn't care. You know what? If we got killed in the line of duty in a car wreck shooting, whatever, we know where we were going, you know, but you always yeah. got those people out there that, doesn't believe that you shouldn't do this and that. And I, I'm not going to get into that topic tonight, Jim. Don't even get me started. But I know we are America. I know we have free speech. But, you know, we were founded on God and country, okay? or That's that's what we were founded on. I'll leave it at that. So I'm going to drop the mic right there. 
but uh but back to the paranormal stuff what have some of the cases you encountered uh mr carroll that's been kind of strange well uh i've had some interesting cases over the years and that uh I was think, thinking about one the other day where actually uh, it was a very bad, one of the worst hauntings I had been, been involved in, the demonic haunting, by the way, not a human spirit haunting. And where this family had actually, uh, they had a suicide. They dealt with a suicide in the family, and they went there to uh, clean up the scene. You know, somebody's always got to clean up after something like that. Right. And unfortunately, it falls to members of the family sometimes. And uh, they found out that the, the fellow who had committed suicide, he uh, committed suicide between two cross mirrors. Uh, I'll talk about that sometime. Cross mirrors actually are ways to open spiritual doorways. Uh, don't do this now, people, okay? <laughs> but if you cross mirrors, it sort of opens up sort of like a portal kind of thing. Uh, and, there's, and mirrors have a lot to do with black magic, by the way. That's another aspect of it. But this man had been a Satanist, and he had committed suicide from these mirrors, and he had uh, all the paraphernalia out. So they went there uh, not only to clean up, you know, what happened, but also to hide all this stuff from his mother. They didn't want her to know what he was into. Wow. And... Uh, Actually, when they left and went home, the attachment this guy had, the demon that instigated this, actually attached to them and followed them home. And their life soon became a living hell. Uh, this this guy evidently, uh, I'm not going to get into brass tacks on this, but he evidently called forth a guardian spirit, a demon. It's called a guardian demon. They're kind of very strong, bad demons, and they are very big on attachment. They're hard to get rid of. So this guardian demon actually followed them home. And uh, it I had to go like to their house four times before we got rid of this thing, which is very unusual because usually it's only one thing, thing on cleansing, and that's it. It was one of the few cases I've ever had to return to that many times. But I think the family was not a real, well, they, they believed, they were believers, but they didn't really have a grasp on that faith. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And that was what was thwarting a lot of it. Or they didn't actually believe what was going on until they had to finally face the truth of what was happening. That's another aspect of it. So you run into some strange things like that with people. But let me tell you what happened during this investigation. There was a guy with me. This is a very weird and eerie thing that happened. He was a young fella, and he had been with me learning the ropes on this. And he was kind of, he believed, but yet he didn't he didn't see what he believed in, okay? In other words, right, he was believed right. intellectually, but it wasn't, you know, it didn't home for him. So he actually challenged this demon. And he said, oh, come on, take me on. I'm ready to take you, you know. And this demon hit him so hard that he his whole world, like, fell out. It attacked him emotionally. His whole world fell apart on him, sitting right there at the table. I had to take that guy outside, out in the driveway, and pray for him. And he never investigated after that, by the way. That was the last time he ever, he quit. He went out of the paranormal completely. He found out it was real, really real, in a bad way. But here's the interesting thing, Chris. While I was praying for him, as soon as I got done play, praying, I put hands on him and prayed for him. As soon as I got done praying, every dog in that neighborhood started howling. Wow. It was really weird. I saw my horror movie. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's uh, that that's pretty wild. That's uh, and, you know, and and I hear this all the time, Jim Lanton. Uh, good night, Jim. Uh, God bless you too. Oops, is that you know all that stuff's fake? You know that stuff's not real. Well, that's fine. You know, 
believe what you want to believe. And I say that over and over. We're just here to educate you. Because you're going to find a friend, a family member or something, doing something they shouldn't do. And you're going to be like, Grizzly and Carol just talked about that on their last podcast. You know, and, 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 and it's going to change your life. And, you know, we, we want you to know, guys and ladies and gentlemen, you know, what to expect. You know, it, it's not always, you know, you go do your investigation and you come home and everything's always joyful, joyful. It's not how it works. Okay. You know, if you're not careful, you can get attachments. Uh, you can have uh, things follow you home. Uh, you can't have things that can affect your health. You can't have things that affect your relationship. That is proven. Now, the Conjuring movies, you know, those are not actual true representations of the cases. Those have been fluffed up for, for movies. It's very now, much like a curse, Chris. It is a curse. Yes. It really yes. is. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, Brenda, uh, for some reason, I think you got a question. I, I just don't know why. Uh, I don't know. I just got a feeling she wants to ask something. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. anybody out there got any questions while we're talking, feel free to ask. Uh, coast to coast and around the world. Uh, we're ready to take on some questions here. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's just amazing, you know, of the non-believers and then something happens to them and they're like, I meant God. I'm like, what do you mean? And uh, Brennan goes, okay, here we go. I knew, I knew you had something. I just don't know why. And I'm like, well, I, I had a bad car wreck and I had a near death experience and, you know, and I was told I wasn't ready and they sent me back. And I was out of my body and I went up into the clouds and, you know, or the, to the tunnel of light or however everybody experiences their transition or whatnot. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I never experienced that. So, yeah. you know, what we go by is what is written in people's encounters with near death experiences, you know, that come back and they tell us what they saw and stuff. You know, I know what scientists say why they saw things, why life flashes before your eyes, before you completely pass. But, you know, there's there's a higher power, guys. And you got to understand that, you know, when when you're out there and you're talking to somebody and you're sitting there playing with one of these REM pods and you're like, OK, make it make it just beep once or make it turn one color or make it do four colors, three color, make it turn red. Um, Brenda says uh, that this person I was talking about is rubbing the negative off on me. And I don't want that to come over on me and my face. So should I cut the tie? I would say if it's, if it's detrimental to you and it is affecting you, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. You want to get out of that situation. Uh, because, you know, you got to think about number one first, because how, how can you ever help anybody if you don't help yourself? You know, that, that, that goes with the territory. So my advice for you is to, you know, yeah, you might want to think about that. Seriously consider, you know, getting, getting as far away from that as you can, if it is affecting you negatively. Yeah. You know, so what, what, what I always tell people is if you try and try, and I'm not saying to preach the word or you push your religion on anybody, that's not what I'm saying. But if you try physically and emotionally to help somebody, yes, Grizzly, yes, I have a prayer. I have prayed. I, I've definitely, I have prayed as well, but you know, uh and but nothing here's changes. I, here's, Go ahead. Here's what I tell. Here's what I tell people, Chris. Okay. If you do your best, God only requires that you do your best, and that's it. You can't go above. You can't go any more than that. You give it your best. The angels can do no more. Okay. They do their best, and that's it. Uh, if you've done your best, then you have to turn it over to God. That's simple. You know. 
Well, that's true. I mean, and that's that's where a lot of people always ask me, uh, Mr. Carroll, when is enough is enough? And and I say, like you say, is uh, I'm fixing our email, by the way. Uh, I didn't know there was a flaw in it. That's why we're not getting any emails. Uh, but what I'm telling people is, is that once you reach a point to where you say in yourself, you know, I feel there's nothing I can do and months have gone by three, two months, however long, and you exhausted everything that you've done besides hitting, you know, your loved one over the head with a frying pan, excuse my French, you know, she says, thank you, Dennis. Uh, you're uh, yes, I hate, I hate it, but you're absolutely right. She says, you know, uh, definitely go get counseling if you're married or in a relationship. Uh, go to your, your faith and your local clergyman. Uh, they can help you uh, if you're married or boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever you are. Uh, exactly. You know, and if that still doesn't work and, you know, maybe it's not meant to be. And it, it, it's a hard pill to swallow. The main mark, Chris, is it is detrimentally affecting you. If it is hurting you physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, it is having that negative effect on you. You might want to think about getting out of that situation. Because I, as a former police officer, I have seen this, okay, with my own eyes. Uh, if you stay in that situation, bad things can happen. Worse things than you think. So uh, you might want to consider that, definitely, because, like I say, you you got to look out for number one. God wants you to do that, okay? Like I said earlier, he doesn't want you to be a doormat for anybody, okay? Uh, you need to look out for number one because uh, God wants you to take care of yourself. God wants you. God wants the best for you, okay? Don't sell God short. No, and you're absolutely right, and and that's real important. And it, it was a rough journey through my life because you know there's things that uh, Darcy says. Some of these people that aren't able to help, they don't want the help. They want to drain your energy. Yeah, Darcy, you're right. Uh, exactly. I, I yeah, you're. I mean, she nailed it. And you know, I don't want to be drained. I I, I guess Darcy, you don't want to be drained. Brenda, no, you don't want to be drained. And uh, I know Jim. He said earlier he don't want to be drained. You know, and it's not like we're just throwing our hands up in the air and like screw this, we're done. I mean, if we're really faithfully trying, and you know, and especially if they have no faith at all, and you're just you know say how I'm gonna say a prayer for you, and they blow up and. You know, and, you know, screw God and, you know, F the prayer and all that other stuff and always negative. And, yeah, that's that's a bad situation because when Mr. Carroll says when prior in law enforcement, which he, everybody knows I was as well, is that uh, I've taken those calls. And, and I told the women, you know, how many times do I have to come out here to lock one of you all up? You know, do you not see this escalating, escalating, escalating? And I'm telling you guys, somebody's going to get hurt or they're going to get killed. No. He would never do that. He loves me. Grizzly, he loves me. You know, I'm gonna tell all you the something. love you can let get me, me is this. not going to stop this. that. Let me say this. This is down around here, Molly. Okay. That kind of a situation has the demonic in it because, and it's going to escalate and it's going to get worse. Like I said about those people, as time went on, they were, they had, their life was a living hell. That's the way these things do. It's not going to get better like that, you know, unfortunately. Things, situations like that only get worse. And I've seen that happen. And you're so right. It's going to escalate and escalate and escalate and something bad is going to happen something bad that you don't want to happen so you need to consider not just the here and now but what may be your future and you don't want to cut short all right no i mean you're absolutely right and i think you know man or female we we always want to believe it's going to get better and i'm one of those type of people too i don't want to never face the truth i never want to give up on somebody 
Uh, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you're right. At some point in your life, you got to draw that line. And yeah, I don't want negative uh, negativity around me. You know, I'm I'm want to be spiritual. And hey, ladies and gentlemen, you know me and my shows. Okay, I'm not perfect. You know, I fall very short from the grace of God. You me know, too. but I, I I try my best every day. You know, but I'm I'm a human being. You know, now you I know, don't uh, deliver like out there earlier. and cause chaos. It's like we said earlier, Chris. Prayer works. Don't stop praying. Keep praying. Don't don't stop that. You know, that's what you need. That's the one thing you don't need to stop. Okay, you need to keep praying and praying. Uh, whatever it's for people and whatever your situation is. Uh, that's the number one thing of spiritual warfare. And a lot of this, especially domestic abuse, like what we're talking about here, is in some fact not just physical warfare, but it is spiritual warfare in many aspects. Because a lot of these people have a, a, a demonic influence on them to do this. Uh, to treat people they supposedly quote unquote love that way. That's not love, okay? I hate to tell you that. God is love, but that's not love. The demonic is hatred and evil and and uh, and slavery. It's not love, okay? That's far from that. So you got to keep praying. Keep praying. And let me tell you this, and I want to say this. The Word of God clearly says that God will not let you in any kind of a spiritual situation like that without giving you an exit of some sort. He'll find you a way out of it if you'll that only believe correct. That is correct. But, you know, it, it's still a hard, hard pill, you know, when people have to ask that question. And I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad somebody brought that up because that's always been on a lot of people's mind. And I, and I always get that question a lot off the air. And, you know, by email and everything. And I understand that. And, you know, I'm not the type to say that in your in your marriage or your relationship by any means, you know, I always want everybody to go seek help and so forth and uh, and do what they need to be done. You know, don't give up. I'm not saying walk away. But I mean, if there's any type of abuse and uh, aggression or anger that is building like it is and, and you seek help and you try to help them and it's getting worse and they're not listening to you and they don't care then that's a choice that you're going to have to make with god or or your higher being as to whether did you hear that it was going off no, i heard that yeah yeah it's flashing right now yeah it's flat it's can you make it go to two colors? Two colors? Two colors. Nope. Okay. So probably false negative. But no, it's it's really important, ladies and gentlemen. I'm I'm glad the topic got brought up. What what's another good question? Brenda, that was a very good question because uh Jimmy had on it. Jimmy hit on it. Uh Darcy even hit on it. Here's another thing, Chris, about the demonic uh, that we talked about earlier. When it ramps itself up until it, when it becomes physical, then that changes the whole game. Okay? Yes. It can be insidious at the beginning. It can be slow and very subtle. But when it ramps up into the physical and becoming physically abusive and all this stuff, that changes the whole game. Okay? And you got to remember that. That's not only with the demonic. Okay, that that goes with other aspects, huh? Um, I I was taught as a police officer that you got to stand there and let people cuss you out, say everything in the book about you to your face, and yes, not sir. do anything about it. Okay, you can't do anything about it. Although you would like to put your hands on them sometimes and do something about it, you can't. Right, right. You can't and remain a police officer. And you got to understand that. But when it becomes physical, if they put a hand on you. The game changes, okay? Always does. You know what? I always love the people that love to point and use their finger. And they touch your chest and push you. Because that gave me the right mm -hmm. to use force yeah. as well. And I'm not saying I roughed them up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just talking. They, 
they treat us like dirt. You see it on YouTube. You see it on the news. You uh, know? Yeah. So, but you know, that was well, a very good question. It's like, that. it's like that old saying, Chris, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names can never hurt me. Uh, you can call somebody all you want and say what you want to. Physic, you know, that way. But when it becomes physical, that changes the whole game. And, you know, you are in a God-given right to defend yourself. Okay? That's as simple as that. I'm just going to leave it there. But there's a God-given right. And like I said earlier, you, God wants you to look out for number one. Okay? He doesn't want you to sacrifice other people for number one. But he wants you to look out for them and take care of yourself because he wants all good things for you. That includes your well-being. You know? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that and that's very important. It very it really is. Uh that that was a good question, you know, because we always get that, you know, on service calls, you know, on, on the PD and so forth. And, you know, um, and we learn the effects now with the data that over the years, what domestic violence has done, uh, whether you're married or not, you know, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, the verbal abuse, it actually scars people. So you got to be careful on that. You know, oh, yeah. what are some of the big things that uh, that we see a lot that you you that you and I talked about when people investigate things? And one of the things I don't like is the Ouija board. I mean, who 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 made the Ouija board? Why was it made? The Ouija board really history history goes way 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 back. Uh, they may have been prototypes for it into the ancient days of Egypt. Uh, it's called a spirit board for one reason. I could make a Ouija board right now out of this piece of paper here. Okay, really. No problem. I can make one right now. It's not the board itself. That's just a piece of cardboard and plastic. The planchette is plastic. Uh, usually, it used to be made out of wood, by the way, the, and the old. But it's a spirit board, and it's just a form of spirit communication. Okay? That's what it's all about. And the Bible specifically warns us not to communicate with spirits, whatever they may be, human or otherwise. Uh, because you, uh, and why does it warn us that? Are we going to learn some inside information? No, that's not what it's about. It's the very fact that this opens the doors in your life to these things. This is this board that we're talking about is just a board, but it is also a doorway, a spiritual doorway that you open. And I don't know if you know if you've ever used the Ouija board, but when people use it, they say, oh, I'm opening this up now. Uh, they address the board, you know, they say, oh, I'm going to open you up for a good session, and we're going to talk to them, and when they get through talking to whoever they want to talk to, they're supposed to say, okay, we're finished now, you can close up. What are they doing here? They're opening and closing the spiritual door. A lot of times they don't even close that door, but once you open that door, don't ever forget this. This is a very important thing, whether it's a portal, naturally occurring, man-made, whatever the case may be. Once you open that spiritual doorway, my friend, anything can come through. Anything. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I've gone to a lot of cemeteries. Well, they have these rituals, the black magic rituals, and, and I think we'll do the, the next show on black magic, okay? But then, I went to a lot of these cemeteries where they've had these black magic rituals, and they open these doorways there, and you have all kinds of paranormal activity. You have shadows, you have all the whole, the poltergeist, up to every bit of it across the board. Why? Because they open these doorways. And yeah. you know, the Bible talks about that. Did you know? I forget now exactly what it was, but one angel was sent. I think it was sent to Abraham. And, and, and the angel told Abraham, I would have been here a few days ago, but I was stopped by this other angel. So it was like going through dimensions to get there. Okay. Went through a doorway to get there. Uh, so I think without a doubt, the door, spiritual doorways do really truly exist. We can't see them. That's part of the unseen part of this universe. But they are there. 
and we can see their effects like the wind. We can see what it does sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, some of the, it's REM pods going off. Uh -uh. Uh, Brennan says, okay, and uh, yes, uh, let me go back here. Diane uh, Darcy, learn to draw healthy boundaries is hard to learn, but you get better each time. Oh, uh, yeah, right. yeah. yeah, Brennan says, absolutely right, Darcy. Uh, Darcy says, eventually, uh, you have to say, I love myself more. Took me nine years to leave, and narcissist's hardest thing was realizing I was in a toxic, toxic, toxic situation to begin with. And yes, the nomming is a good description. And yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right because the stories I've I've been hearing, like Brenda's, there's something not right. You know, it, it's not it's not the person that they know. You know what I'm saying, Mr. Carroll? Oh yeah. And let me say this. The demonic, like I said earlier, it recognizes marriage and relationships, okay? And that's love, real love. If you have a real love, marriage, relationship, uh, the demonic hates that, okay? Because that, that's a good thing. They hate whatever's good. No matter what it is, they hate it. And you're going to have things work against you. If you're like, you know, especially if you're a child of God in a marriage, it seems like these things are going to work overtime against you. And you must realize that's part of the territory. But the demonic can have a hand in these things. We must understand that. And that's part of demonic oppression. Not possession, but oppression. Yes. Yes, that is that is correct. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I fixed your email. It's Demonology Today Spiritual. Uh, I didn't realize until I was showing the email, I looked down, I spelled demonology wrong. So uh, that's uh -oh. before I had my new glasses. So I got trifocals. And I was looking at that. I was like, demonology. I was like, I was missing an O. So that's what I was doing, going back and fixing that for both banners. But uh, if you are interested in the spiritual warfare uh, kit, it's only $54.95. Uh, 1020 of it is priority mail shipping. The rest of it just covers the contents. Uh, like I said, inside, I'd be more than happy to send it out to you. But, you know, it, it's very crucial to listen what Mr. Carroll has to say because it's it's very important because he's been through it all. Uh, yeah, Brenda says the game has changed for sure. Uh, Darcy says those damn things are banned from my property. Oh, amen to that. Yeah. Uh, oh, Brenda says, That's that. right. Me too. And Brenda says, yeah, you don't know what could come in. And, and you really don't. And they, they can come in many forms and many shapes and sizes. And they can act like a little child that is so good and be the worst thing that they ever crawled the face oh, of the earth. Yeah. Uh, here's another thing. Uh, you've heard of Pazuzu, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Pazuzu, okay. He's been on Ouija boards for a long time, from century to century. This is a demon, okay? And that's how they operate. And uh, don't ever forget, they have a network, too, by the way. They got a support network of other demons. Uh, but I actually had a, a thing one time, I'll tell you this right quick, where a demon knew my name in this situation. A few weeks later, I was far away in another location, different set of circumstances. People didn't even know my name. This demon recognized me and said, hey, how you doing, Dennis? Whoa. Didn't even know who I was. I knew who he was. He knew me. Uh, but that was that's the way the board works. People get, get uh, you can hear about this a lot of time. They'll get this one message on a board, and somebody else will pick up on another board. It's a network, okay? Don't let that fool you, people. They know what they're doing. They're insidious, and they're out, they have a, a big A plus in deceivability. They love to deceive people. Yeah, they really do, and that's one of the things that I always tell people. You know, when they say, "Oh, my loved one came to me," you know, during the day. Are you sure? You. you, you I mean, unless you know exactly, you, you really don't. And I'm not, and I'm not trying to be negative and saying, no, your loved ones don't come back and say hello to you or make their presence known. 
but they can take shapes as loved ones and so forth. And that's another thing to be careful about. And people are going to laugh. Antique shops, estate sales, people get attached to their personal belongings. And you purchase those items that somebody loved and adored and you bring it home and you start getting activity and you don't know what's going on. And, when, and Carol and I have a conversation and, you know, well, what, what has changed? You're going to say nothing. And then we're going to have to go through this list. What? Okay. Did you go and buy anything? Well, I went to Trader's Bakers. There's another thing, Chris. People have to be very careful with the objects that you bring into your life, too, sometimes. Not just let people that you let into your life. They can have attachments that can attach to you, too, by the way. So be very careful what company you keep. You are known by the company you keep, okay? And demons are, too, by the way. No, Uh, Brenda Darcy. Hold on. Brenda Darcy and Norma Diane. Uh, Repeat that one more time. I want them to hear what you just said. I said, be careful who you let into your life. Because those people have attachments. Those attachments can attach to you, too. And you said also about that person can do what? Be affiliated or something? How would you say it? You, you worded it perfectly. The person can have an attachment. All right. And they and that attachment can attach to you. Let it happen, Yeah. You can get these. You can get an attachment from someone else's attachment. In other words, they can attach to you as well. Yeah. I mean, you run that risk of uh, if you're hanging out with somebody that has a demonic attachment, that attachment can transfer to you anytime it wants to. Don't forget that. No, you're right. And I, I'm a firm believer in that, you know, and, you know. But also, it, and also, Chris, uh, objects. We must be very careful about some objects because they can have attachments, too, by the way. Not just people, but even animals have been known to have attachments. Uh, but some objects, let me tell you a quick story. I had a woman call me one time. She said I was having all kind of paranormal activity going on, you know, and, uh, and uh, she said, I don't know what's happened. My house has always been quiet. Nothing going on. I haven't been playing with a Ouija board. I haven't done anything. I said, well, this is very interesting. I said, and it just occurred to me. I said, well, have you bought anything recently into your house? You know, have you brought anything? She said, no. Well, oh, no, by the way, uh, there was a love seat I bought at a yard sale uh, a couple of weeks ago. I said, was that before everything started happening? She said, yeah, that's about the time everything started happening. And I said, well, go back and ask these people what the history is of that love seat. But she called me about a week later, and she said, Mr. Carroll, I don't know why, how you knew this, but I found out the history on that. She said, I got rid of it the other day. Somebody committed suicide on that love seat. Whoa. Whoa. Yep. Now, what about these boxes that people buy off eBay? No, the Divic, Divic boxes. Yeah. You know? I mean, why, well, why would you buy that? Uh, certain sorcerers are said to be able to place demonic spirits in things like bottles, boxes, objects. Uh, that's why I warn people never pick up anything in the cemetery. They, uh, we call them devil traps. They leave these objects in cemeteries. If you pick it up, you take them home and you take home an attachment with you. Um, the same thing with a divinity box. If you open it up, Usually nine times out of ten, that demon's going to say, oh, here's my, my friend and attach to you. Um, you let me out. But why would you buy it? Well, I would not advise you to buy something like that if it's advertised as a Dibbit box. The only Dibbit boxes I've seen were actually in museums. I wouldn't want to open one up. No, thank you. Uh, but uh, I would not foolishly buy something like that. You're just asking for trouble. Why? I mean, you know, why would you want to do that? That's just, it would be a stupid idea. I'm sorry to tell you that, but if you do that, it's stupid. Well, I'll tell you this, Mr. Carroll. I watched a person buy one off eBay, and uh, he got it, and it looked like an actual divot box, and uh, it looked legit. 
and he got his little instrumentation out, his little uh, EMF detectors and voice recorders and REM pods. And anytime he would scan the box with his EMF detector, it would max out. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, he had a camera overhead, so you can see no electronics on his desk. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, look. And he would hold it, and he would back off, and it would go to zero. And the closer he got, the hotter it got, and it would ping and max out. So he didn't believe in it. So he was like, yeah, whatever. He's like, I'm going to crack this, you know what, open, and and I'm we're going we're gonna to do it live on TV. And everybody's telling him, no, don't do it. Don't do it. If it's a real divot box, do not do it. You're 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 gonna have problems. He's like, screw you all, man. It's just a, it, you know, I bought it off of eBay. There's nothing in this damn box. Yeah, I'm getting, you know, he's figuring there's some kind of electronic device making it go off. You know, it's all a setup. And let me tell you something, Mister Carroll. He took a knife and he broke the wax seal, and he took off that lid, and the box was empty. He took his EMF detector, okay, and went around that box and inside that box got nothing. Immediately, a picture behind him fell off the wall. For the next five weeks, he could not stay in that apartment. That's how bad it got. He had to leave cameras running to film his kitchen doors on the cabinets coming open, his drawers coming open on the silverware noise being made like somebody was stomping their feet around when he was at work you know and he was freaking out and he was he was telling do not people buy these things do not open them it, it's not a joke this is real i'm sorry you know that i made this mistake and he was trying to tell people not to do it now i mean why would you uh, even I test it? some people are hard-headed chris <laughs> they have to learn the hard way unfortunately but uh, uh, I'm going to tell you this. I, I'm all about skepticism to a certain extent, okay? When I investigate, there's a little bit of a skeptic in me, okay? Because that's just the way I operate. Yeah, I want to figure out, you know, what's going on. But to be a cold, hard skeptic, unfortunately, usually most of the time, they're their own worst enemy. Yeah, you're right on that. Now, Cody's asking you, is Jezebel one of the worst types of spirits? Because it feels like she makes the worst of traps for people. Yes, she is. She is a bad. She's a bad girl, and she is very good at leading people. Like this new age I mentioned earlier in the program, she's very good at leading people astray down the wrong avenues and into the wrong places. She's very good in in her uh, susceptibility to these things. She opens you up to some bad situations. She's very good at it. Now, Diane's asking, is it true that a demon a spirit is devoted to each Ouija board? Uh, I've heard that. Uh, that is true. Nobody really knows about that for sure. It wouldn't surprise me if they're not, because there's plenty of demons to go around, okay? But uh, the, the, the board, you got to remember one thing about the board. Let me say this about it. Like I said earlier, I can make one out of a piece of paper. It's not the board. It is your intention behind that, what you're doing. That's what opens the spiritual doorways, the intention of what you're doing, the little ritual that you do with it. All of this is just part of it, okay? Um, that's what's behind it, the intention. Usually, the demonic, when they see that intention, they grab a hold of it and run with the ball. Well, yeah, they, they actually do. So, I mean, you're actually right on that. Uh, I mean, they, these are very good questions, you know, because I, I've heard that about the boards. Uh, I messed with one in my early teens. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't serious about it. We didn't know nothing about it. It never did work, you know. And it, it's strange, Mr. Carroll, how they get them on TV and they work every time. Right on cue, you know. Yeah, and I just don't get it. And, and it's like it moves automatically on cue each time. I mean, really, it doesn't even work when I did it. Uh -huh. So uh, my grandparents had one. It was a very old one, too. Well, you know, the number one thing they say about the Ouija board is you must believe that it works. 
You must believe in it, in other words. So it's kind of an anti-act of faith or something, I guess. It's kind of strange in that respect. But like I said, the intention that you're putting into it is what gets the demonic attention. Uh, uh, and that's the- what they want. That's what they're looking for. And I think they will help you along with that once they do. You understand what I'm saying? They'll fool you into thinking that uh, yes, you're you're real good on the board. You have a talent with the board. You know, uh, you can get things done. You can communicate. Uh, so you got to, but like I said earlier about some of these psychics, who are you really talking to? You know, you don't ask that question. Who's really on the board with you? Uh, Brenda, the email is demonology today. Today, spiritual at gmail.com demonology today spiritual at gmail.com uh i had to add spiritual to it because the demonology today uh was actually taken and that's why oh, I, uh yeah i spelled it wrong that's why it was work so to make everybody a little bit more fuzzier i put spiritual at the end and let them know that we're doing this spiritually not oh, okay. the demon wise so i hope that was okay with you uh, oh, so man. it's and it is the same password, by the way. So I didn't change the password, so you can get right oh, into it too. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, but no, Brenda. Uh, you know, you're all asking some good questions, and don't ever be afraid to ask any questions. Don't think you're asking ignorant questions. Uh, you know, I may not have all the answers, but Mr. Carroll, uh, 55 years, probably has most of them. And if he doesn't, I'm he's sure. the type of guy, he'll tell you, I'm going to have to check in on it, and I'll get back with you. And he will. If I mean, we'll but, find out. If we don't if we don't know, we'll definitely try to find out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not an expert. You know, I'm in still the, the preemie stage. Uh, I'm still getting my feet wet. I'm, I, I, I say I'm up, I'm up to my knees is what I say. Um, uh, I'm learning how to walk and wade in water before I learn how to swim and dive. Yeah. I guess that's the best way to say it. So, that's the best way to do it, too. That's the best way to learn. You know? Right, right. But no, but no, good questions. Uh, Diane, uh, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, you have another question? It, I mean, it's, it's okay. Don't be afraid to ask. Oh, yeah. There are no stupid questions. Only stupid answers, usually, but but there are no stupid questions, okay? Definitely not. Okay, Brenda sent me, she's testing out her email. I think I spelled everything right with my new bifocal, so let's see here. Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, uh, uh, I would like more information about the spiritual box. Okay, Uh, Teresa Harper, I will get back to you here after the show, not a problem. And uh, I'll take care of you on that. So, yeah, so the email is working. Uh, Demonology Today, spiritual. Okay, so, yes, the email is working. Thank you, guys. Sorry about that. Also, uh, if you want to put up my website, Chris, uh, I have a contact form on there if they would like to get in touch oh, with me yeah. that way. Too. Yeah, hold on for a second. Uh, let's, let's add that. Uh, com. Let's see here. Create a banner. It's www.denniscarroll. It's, uh, or you could just put denniswcarroll.com. I think it'll work that way, man. I already had uh, www. I got www.dennis, D E N N I S, Carroll, C A R R O L. Dennis, Dennis W. Carroll. I had to, there's another Dennis Carroll as a soccer player. Okay, so I had to kind of put my middle on the next oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, so Dennis, Dennis W. Carroll. W. Carroll. So D- I don't play soccer. W C A R R O L L dot com. There we go. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. Add banner, and there it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's www.dennisw.carol.com. Please reach out to him on his website. Uh, You can always reach out to us on the email uh, address as well. Uh, But, you know, feel free if if you want to ever uh, send an email. Uh, I'll monitor the emails while we're on the phone. Uh, I can put up my... uh, 
private uh, Facebook uh, messenger. You can send messages there to ask a question. If you don't want your name to be known, it's okay. Um, don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you got questions or situation or whatever. We're there, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you if you got activity, and let us know. Uh, mm -hmm. We we don't judge, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I watch, been through, had enough encounters when it comes to you know spirits and and things and and even in my studio since i moved in my old studio you know i believe in anything at this point yeah you, know, uh, you would believe chris i mean times people say oh you're gonna think i'm crazy i said no i'm the last nope. person they would yes. think you're crazy okay uh and that's the way that it goes yeah it is and a lot of people say that and you're not crazy you know, I mean, yeah, you may tell your friends and they'll be like, oh, you're crazy. That did not happen. You're just, nah, you know, and it was funny because, you know, uh, working on this murder case, uh, Mr. Carroll, uh, one of the psychics reached out and was like giving us some information on the side. And she was talking about dogs. And, uh, and I was like, she, you've been dreaming about dogs. She said, there's two things about that. And I was like, and, uh, cause I, I, my daughter has my two chihuahuas. Those are my babies. And, uh, she said, the girl is telling you that when you see dogs in your dream, that's referencing, rep, referencing her. And then on top of that, she says, you have two dogs that are wanting to see you. They're missing you really bad. And I was like, wow. I mean, that just like, you know, took my socks off, right? Uh, Darcy, true. The guys, people only say that you're crazy if they never experienced anything paranormal. You're definitely not crazy. You're absolutely right, Darcy. And I like that. We said saying, that I like beginning. that. Uh... I like that saying, Chris. They'll call me crazy till they find out I'm right. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, let's stop and think. And I'm not trying to get all biblical or anything, but can you imagine living during the time of Jesus walking upon the earth and him saying he's the Messiah and all this other stuff? I mean, that would be a hard pill to swallow. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, it would for me. I mean, now, once I saw the miracles and him, you know, and Moses and the, and stuff that he's done and did, and uh, yeah, I think that would change my mind. Uh, dog is God's uh, spell backwards. Spell backwards. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't think about that. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. I have a dog, too. He's asleep in there somewhere now. He's a little cocker spaniel. Uh, he's like my son to me, really. I mean, I couldn't tell any difference in that. But uh, uh, I think that, that that God gave us dogs for a reason, because they are. He wanted to show us what real un, uh, unconventional love was. You know, there's that's what it is. You know, they. I've seen people be mean and abusive to dogs, and dogs still love them. If people yeah. could be like dogs, you know. Um, they love un unconditionally. There's no condition to their love, and that that's the way people should be. Well, and that's the only way you should be. And you know, if you got a friend, uh, whoever we talked about or referencing earlier with everybody with the same issues, uh, let's see here, Darcy. Uh, we will send them with four legs instead of wings, so you know that the, they are angels by your that's side. Good. That is the good one. Co Cody, they are the ones, bring his comment up, they're the ones like the opposite of Jezebel. Uh, uh, yeah. Darcy, unconditional love is the medicine dogs can teach us about. And, uh -huh. well, you, you know, I agree with that. And the problem is, is, is the world's not that way. And, you know, and let's go back and you got a problem with a loved one or a good friend or whoever it is, your spouse and stuff like that. And you tried and tried and tried. And it's that much negative or that much negative in the relationship. And it's abusive, you know, go get help, 
and pray about it and you know lay it on god's hands and in his heart and pray I always about it. Something, uh, oh one thing i always said about jezebel cody uh she was so full of poison she probably killed those four dogs when they ate yeah her. yeah 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 <laughs> Uh, Cody, like honestly compared, uh, like honestly compared to deceit, that's why they eat her in the Bible. So yeah, but no, I mean it's it, it's it's something. And uh, you said the next topic is what for next week? Uh, black magic. We're going to talk a little bit about black magic in oh, the world today. Uh, black Cole, magic um, in the world today. Brenda says, I don't feel that much hate until someone does something to a dog. Yes. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, and I've said this before. It seems like animals, especially dogs, cats, and children, are, uh, 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 are targeted by the demonic many times. Simply because the demonic, and we'll talk about this next week when we talk about black magic. The demonic wants to corrupt, and it wants to desecrate the innocent. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah, Mr. Thanks, Cody. Yeah, thank you, Cody. You're right. And ladies and gentlemen, like I said, uh, next week, uh, if you want to come on live, uh, I'll send you the link. If you want to ask questions in, in the chat room. Uh, oh, and definitely children. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was that was my that, that was one of my weak spots was women and children involved. Uh, and, when I had that, and, when that, and when the demonic gets involved with them, that ramp set up quite a few notches for me. Yeah, it really does. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about black magic. Uh, there's a lot of uh, twists and turns with that. Uh, that has been a hot topic in the paranormal world when it comes to researching and so forth. Uh, so we'll see how that goes next week. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of day. Uh, make sure, uh, send us an email. And let me bring up her email since I got it corrected. Uh, well, that's a spiritual warfare. Well, it's the same email, de demonology today, spiritual at gmail.com. And don't forget this, you know, go to www.dennisWCarroll.com. Give him some love. And like you said, if you got encounters or something that you want to talk about, he's got forms on there. Fill it out. It is confidential. You know, he doesn't put that Absolutely. out or air that out. Now, we may discuss a story uh, or your story later on in another episode. We'll, we'll, we'll never give out names Not or honestly. anything. Always, yeah. always anonymously. Yeah. Absolutely. But ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure tonight. And from us to you, with great love, from coast to coast and around the world, we say good night. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Good show, Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Chris. <laughs>